Have you ever thought about um, hearing loss and anger? Now, this happens frequently, and I think it's a good topic to touch base with and, and see, you know, the evolution of anger and hearing loss. If you haven't been on my channel, my name is Lisa, and this is Hearing Loss Pathfinder. And I put out videos at least twice a week. Uh, Tuesday is Tech Tuesday. <laughs> I talk about technology and hearing loss. And on Thursdays, I do kind of like a reflective type uh, video. So, so here we go. Uh, so, anger. Now, a lot of times in life, we talk about... Um, she caused me to be angry, or she made me angry, or he made me angry, or the dog made me angry. <laughs> and one of the things we have to remember is nobody makes you anger, angry. There's, there's a reason why you, you know, there's a reason internally, there's a reason why you get angry. So nobody can make you be something or cause feelings. The feelings come from you and so you have to figure out okay how do I handle that how did that happen within me and what can I do sorry my nose is itchy <laughs> and what can I do to change that so in hearing loss it happens really easy in hearing loss it's like you know people will make the same mistakes over and over and they'll talk to you from a different room or they'll just talk to you softly again and you can't hear them and they do it over and over and you've already told them please don't do that you know uh face me uh please be in the same room and it gets tiresome to repeat that message over and over so it's it, hearing loss requires a lot of patience <laughs> A lot of patience and if you get angry from time to time that is okay sometimes you might have to walk out <laughs> and just blow off steam somewhere else because remember the anger is yours and the steam is yours and you have to find ways to keep it you know under control and keep it you know in a way that you practice recognizing you know, okay, I'm getting angry, I'm getting frustrated again, so let me say, okay, uh, I'm going to take a walk, I'll be back. <laughs> so, <laughs> hopefully they didn't tell you that the house was burning down, <laughs> but, you know, um, <laughs> it is really hard to train people to understand hearing loss. It is really hard to train people to speak to you in a different way. Um, I can't tell you, you know, how hard it has been, you know, when I, I belong to a couple of organizations and that means a lot of people. And, you know, <laughs> I have to train each one. <laughs> so, and ask them over and over again, please don't do that. <laughs> so. I try to make it funny, I try to make it light, so that, um, you know, they can, they, they can get it and they'll remember. Uh, it's, it's hard because, especially in my case, because I use cochlear implants. And with cochlear implants, we hear pretty well. However, we still are hearing impaired. <laughs> so, and that's what people don't understand. I have a big conference coming up in October. And they already asked me, there was one member who always said that she was, she was deaf, um, but not really. It's just she, she didn't want to talk about her hearing loss. So she would say, I'm deaf, let's not talk about it. <laughs> so it's just her way of coping. So because everybody understood she was deaf, then they always got captioning. They always got sign language interpreter. And so now... Unfortunately, she became very ill and she passed away. So, so it was it was very sudden. So anyway, from that situation, I'm the only one now that is hearing impaired. So uh, I got an email saying, Lisa, 
Are you going to be there for the um, conference in, in October? And do you need uh, a captionist? It's like, yes. And I know it's not only going to benefit me, but it's going to benefit older members who are going to be there and, and need to see, you know, what's being said. So I said, yes, um, I need an uh, interpreter. And it'll not only benefit me, but other members. So it's, it's that kind of thing. So I just have to be patient. I know every year they're going to be asking me, do you need a captionist? Yes. So it's, it's that kind of thing. That it's really important to be patient in how we educate. Educate with a sense of humor. Educate with patience. Know that we're going to have to repeat know that you know and understand that the emotions are ours so we have to figure out as an individual you know how do i manage this emotion this frustration of mine and you know approach it emotionally in a different way you know if i know intellectually okay I'm going to have to repeat, you know, I'm going to have to educate them differently every single time. Um, and slowly they'll get it, but it's going to take a long time, even with family members, even with family members. And I think a lot of us know that. Um, so I just want to say that anger is, is not bad in itself. It's an emotion, you need it, because that tells you your patients are running out, <laughs> they're going down, um, but it'll be important for you to work at figuring out how to change those emotions on saying, hmm, Sally didn't get it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find a different way of handling this. So. You know, anger, is it bad? No, it's not. Do I need to figure out how to balance my emotions? Yes. Um, or to see it differently so it doesn't hit me that way? Yes. That would be your responsibility. <laughs> and to know you're the educator, you're the trainer of hearing loss. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, if it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, you know, a close family member, sometimes taking them to your, hold on, <coughs> sometimes taking them to your audiology appointment and having that discussion with the audiologist might also help. Because the ideologist has some techniques of talking about hearing loss. <coughs> I can do this. And, you know, that also might be helpful. Another technique um, is to have the ideologist help you with certain family members or, you know, a close relationship or with a close friend they, you know, and that might have a, a stronger impact on the person. Well, I went with, with Lisa to her, to her ideology appointment and the audiologist talked to both of us about hearing loss and techniques of communicating. So that, that might stick more than sometimes might stick more than, you know, how I might be doing it. So, uh, so having an external person work with, with family or friends, you know, can also be very helpful. Um, I wish there were more groups uh, for hearing loss and teaching uh, certain techniques uh, for communication and all that kind of stuff, but unfortunately there isn't. <laughs> so, um, but, 
So the ideologist can help sometimes if you're in a pickle with a person in a relationship is getting too bumpy, then the audiologist is more than willing to help out with, with some counseling and some guidance. So, you know, to keep that anger, you know, in, in check. Um, the ideologist can't fix your anger. The other person can't fix your anger. They haven't caused you to be angry. It is, it is the anger comes from you and that's something that we all have to, to work on. We're hearing impaired and we're having to educate over and over <laughs> for people to, uh, so they understand how to speak to us. And it's not easy. It's not easy for them. It's not easy for us. So, you know, is there a magic bullet? No, there isn't. So, um, Sometimes people talk to me still with their backs to me or from the kitchen when I'm in the dining room or, you know, they'll talk to me from an office over there and I'm way over in the dining room or I'm at my mailbox and somebody's trying to talk to me. So, you know, uh, it's, it just requires patience. And sometimes I'll be at my computer and somebody will walk in. So then I'll say, oh, hold on, hold on. And then I turn around, you know, because I'm in a wheelchair. So I have to turn the wheelchair around um, and, and face them so, so that I can hear better. I can hear the whole sentence. I can hear what they're requesting. And then sometimes I'll just say it out. And, you know, I haven't turned around yet. So it's like, hold on. You know, what you have to say is important to me. So just chill. <laughs> now you can say it now that I'm facing you. So it's, so I try to make it funny and, you know, um, so it, it's that kind of thing, you know, how can we make it lighter? How can we make it funny? How can we make it that it is memorable? You know, uh, you know, I, sometimes the people are in a hurry and say, well, never mind. It's like, no, what you have to say is important. So please say it when I'm facing you. And then I'll, you'll, all you'll have to do is say it once. <laughs> but so it requires a lot of patience from us uh, due to, you know, our hearing loss. So that, that includes all of us, all of us. So uh, you're not alone. You are certainly not alone in this situation. And we will just have to keep on practicing uh, patience and working with our anger when, when things don't work out. <laughs>